Well, what you're looking at here is the very first time I'm trying to use the camp oven. Uh, this could be a huge disaster, I guess. So I've never used one of these things before. I have at least managed to get the charcoal burning reasonably well. There's plenty of heat under it. I don't want too much heat. Uh, what I will do in a minute is shovel some of those coals on top, I guess. Uh, to, uh, let's give you a look at the roast. I'm go giving a pork roast a go. It's a little bit bigger than I wished it was. Um, a smaller one would have done a better job. I'm going to have very major problems trying to get the vegetables done at the same time. So at the moment I've just got him upside down. I'm going to turn him the right way up. I just wanted to get that top end sizzling to start off with. Uh, we've got a bit of a trivet underneath it, just to hold it off the bottom. Uh, hopefully it won't burn. Uh, but now it's time to turn that over. Now that uh, seems a bit on the hot side, so I'm going to raise it up a bit and get some coals on the top. Now there's quite a bit of heat coming from underneath that, uh, hopefully enough to keep it cooking but not enough to burn it and uh, the coals on top providing the heat to get down into the top of the camp oven. Uh, it's going to be a rather interesting experiment I guess. Hopefully I won't totally bugger up the pork. And then because the camp oven is pretty small, I've got no choice but to use the Weber to do the roasted veggies, so uh, that should come out okay. I've used that plenty of times, so I'm not too worried about that. I am terrified about what's going to happen to that pork roast at the moment, but uh, we'll find out, I guess. Turns out that the roast I used was a little bit big for this camp oven, unfortunately, and it's just touching the lid, so we're going to burn the skin on top. Not much I can do about that, I guess. But uh, with the gap underneath there, and I've reduced some of the heat on top by taking away some of the coals, hopefully uh, we will get there without turning the whole thing into one burnt lump of charcoal. Now, from what I can see at the moment, it does appear to be still cooking a little bit too fast. So I want to reduce that temperature a bit more, so I'll just raise it up from where it is, just to try and get that temperature down a little bit. So that just brings the oven up a little bit more away from that heat and uh, hopefully it'll slow the cooking process down a little bit now. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, uh, we've also got to reduce the heat a little bit on this. But at least with the Weber, it's as simple as turning the knob. Still quite a long way to go with both the pork and the veggies, so we'll sit down and have another tinny or two. I've had the potatoes and carrots and onions on for about half an hour, so now we'll chuck in the capsicum and the pumpkin because that cooks quite a lot quicker. Well, this has been on for about three quarters of an hour now. I anticipate that we've probably got about that amount of time again to go before it's done. But uh, time to hop it off there and have a quick look at what the progress is like. the strings here have come apart a bit. It's a rolled roast, but I guess that'll help it cook. Still got some way to go. 
I'll pop that back in as central as I can. We are going to get a bit of crackling, although some of it's a little bit on the burnt side. It is at least looking like a pork roast, I guess. You can see as this turns to powder on here, that means the heat has been dropping on here and there's only a couple of bits there that are hot. We'll get a little bit more from the bottom, stick it on top. There's still a ton of heat coming off that charcoal. Now we just adjust the legs, make sure you don't get too close to the hot bits of the legs. And all you do is drop that down a few inches just to get it closer to the heat. Make sure that your legs are well set and she's not going to move around once you've let go of it. And there you go. All in all, I suppose we're not going too badly so far. There are certainly worse ways to spend the afternoon than uh, sitting next to an old oval in a tiny town that time has almost forgotten and getting your roast ready for the evening meal now we're not out in some incredibly remote pristine location sitting in the little town of Pier Wanning and I gotta tell you what that's about as good as anything Nobody around, a few cars passing here and there. View up over the hill there. Nice bit of farmland across the oval. And just imagining what the little town might have been like back in the day. When on a Sunday afternoon, the community would have got down here to play a game of footy or play a game of cricket. Would have been a local dance on Saturday night at the hall behind us. A lot of these things have died out now, unfortunately. But these are still great little places to come and sit and just relax. Okay, here's the big test. Did this work? Well, we've definitely got a bit of crackling there. This, unfortunately, was where it was touching the lid when it was starting to cook. Okay, let's have a look. This piece here is definitely cooked and yep we have some crackling so I guess for a first attempt at pork roast that's not too bad. And this is the end result, a very first attempt at a pork roast in the camp oven and it's come out pretty well. Now I've got to be honest and say a little bit did have to go back in but it was a little bit pink for us, pork I think should be well cooked. Some people like it a little underdone, but uh, it's pork, so even in a country where pork is safe, I like to have it well done. Mm -hmm.